hi everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to be analyzing the novel antis of savannah by chinua achebe we are going to be discussing the plot of the novel in detail and analyze the chapters in the novel the novel is a social political commentary uh, it is set in a fictitious nation called Kanga. The story begins with the reader uh, being treated into an inside look into a presidential cabinet meeting. Uh, it is revealed to the readers that the country, that is the Republic of Kanga, has been in a political turmoil and violence for about two years, and the dictator which is that the president of the country was removed, ousted, and now another uh, president is uh, elected. So the story revolves around three characters. The character of Sam, Chris Oriko, and Ikem Oshodi. The three characters were childhood friends and have now come into power, fulfilling uh, crucial uh, responsibilities within their society. So, Sam is the leader that is the president of the Republic of Kanga, the new president, while Chris is the head of the information ministry, or you can regard, refer to him as commissioner for information, and he came, is the editor-in-chief of the newspaper owned by the government called the National Gazette. The National Gazette is a widely circulated gov uh, government newspaper. Uh, it is published and circulated around the entire provinces and the states in the Republic of Kanga. So, despite the common interests of the three friends, the three characters, and their deep ties, the three are vastly different in their political leanings and personal temperament. So, Sam is a hard stand man, a career soldier. He has come into power, but it is clear that he does not have his people's interest in mind. To make matters even worse, he has steadily become increasingly paranoid over time and his two friends that is chris and ikem are becoming worried about the status of sam becoming a dictator because he they remove a dictator and now sam become the president in the place of the dictator but now his friend chris and ikem he came and I'm worried that okay, Sam also is becoming another dictator. So he came on the other hand, is a polar opposite of Sam. That he can is very critical. He is a scholarly fellow uh, with an appreciation of art and culture, and he came is quickly becoming Sam's most vocal critic voicing out his opinions regarding the need to make several government reforms. And the other character, Chris, is the most level-headed of the three and often plays the role of a mediator between Sam and Ikem. We can also say that uh, Ikem and Chris were critical to Sam's success. As an elected official, even to the uh, position of president. But with matters taking a turn for the worse, both Chris and Ikem come to regret their involvement and, as such, seek to restrain Sam by leveraging their position. No, Sam is the president. Ikem is the one in charge of the national newspaper the National Gazette, and also we have the Chris, which is the commissioner or the one in charge of uh, uh, Ministry of Information. So, both of them are becoming to, that is Chris, 
and Ike might be coming to regret their actions and involvement in making sure that Sam becomes the president of the Kangan Republic. Because Sam even was indifferent to the position at the beginning. He does not want to ascend the position of president, uh, thinking that his preparation as a soldier is not enough. And Sam, in his desire now, now Sam has become a political dictator. And Sam, in his desire to hang on to his power, decide that he wants to become president for life. A position that has never occurred or happened is not even heard of in the entire history of Kanga. So, this move by Sam requires a nationwide referendum and plebiscite. But Abazon, which is one of the regions in Kanga, reject the notion of putting Sam in power for the rest of his biological life. So, in response to the Arifusa, Sam, the president, deprived the region of his support during a drought in the hope that the region will break, that the region will submit to him and deny them the facilities, especially water, will make the region to cower to his desire. It will break their spirit. So, Sam's embargo forces the region to send the representative to the capital, which is Basa, to plead for their cause and get the necessary supplies. Sam, however, mistakenly suspect the mission of the delegate from Abazon to be a ruse, thinking that they might be planning a revolt. So, Sam's paronia fuels his imagination and even further make the conclusion that the revolt may eventually be funded and organized by someone privy to private details about his life. Then he suspected Ikem to be the one behind the representative sent to Basa to come and plead for the people of Abazon and also Ikem planning a revolt against him. So, Sam become increasingly more paranoid and dangerous as a result. And although Chris believes this to be true, Chris still has faith that Sam can be a force for the good of his country if he remains in power. He can, on the other hand, become more and more outspoken in his newspaper editorials openly questioning the president's motive and morality. But this does not go down well with Sam, the president, because Ikem's critical editorials is getting to the nerves of the president, the Sam. So Chris, which is the one in charge of the Ministry of Information, and cautioned uh, Ikem. He wisely counseled him to be more courteous and take a more moderate tone in his editorials. He should not be confronting government and government policies in the editorial of government-owned newspaper, the National Gazette. So, the novel then shift focus from the three characters, and then the novel introduce their respective female partners. These women play crucial roles in the life of the main characters. One of them is Elewa. Elewa is Ikem's girlfriend and mother of their child. She is not as well educated as her partner and is employed in a shop. Then another partner is Beatrice, which is the partner of Chris Oriko, is Chris Oriko's fiance. In contrast to Elewa, she is an educated career woman. She's currently holds office as an administrator of a local government unit. Beatrice also shares common ties with the three main characters, which is Sam, Chris, and Ikem. She's under Sam as a government employee and has been friends with Ikem since they were kids. She is privy to both the movement 
within the government and the media because of her ties with Chris and Ikem. And this allowed her to understand the situation from a unique vantage point. And she advised, advised both Chris and Ikem that they have no relationship with either the populace or the land, preventing them from effectively taking social problems, tackling social problems effectively. Beatrice complained that Chris and Ike are neither here nor there. They are not having a good relationship with the people of the land, and at the same time, they are not having good relationship with the government. While Ikem is critical of the government, Chris is more indifferent. So matters come to a head with Sam and Ikem when Sam in instruct Chris to remove Ikem from his position as an editor of the national newspaper. Because Sam believed that Ikem is somehow involved in the rebellion and organized the rebellion organized by the leaders of the Abazon. And Chris react to this command in a very uncharacteristic manner. He outrightly refused to remove Ikem. And he does not want to relieve Ikem of his position. Despite the refusal, Ikem was still removed by the government. And uh, Ikem on wise decision of Ikem was that despite his refusal, Ikem is Ikem uh, still continued to criticize the government. And the government propagandists capitalized on a joke Ikem made about Sam issuing a command to cast new cons with his head on them. They twist this joke, asserting that Ikem want to have the president decapitated and Sam can no longer let this slide so Iken is abducted late at night from his house and assassinated by the government secret police Iken's assassination served as a wake-up call for Chris and Chris recognized that his childhood friend Sam is now, for all intent and purpose, dead and in his place is a power-hungry madman who will stop at nothing and no one to secure his power. So, leveraging his tie within the international press community, uh, Chris exposes Sam as a murderer. He was as a murderer and dictator, then goes underground. Chris managed to round up a ragtag bunch of sympathizers, including Emmanuel, who is a former student of Ikem and a student leader. Together with Abdul, they escape to Basa, the state capital, and to Abazon. So, meanwhile, Sam has called for a manhood. Chris is now on the government most wanted list and orders that anyone caught assisting him or withholding information about Chris is to be arrested as well. So, en route to Abazam, Chris surveys the difficulty, survey the difficulty that some despotic regime has brought to their nation, immersed in the daily activities of his people. Chris reconnects to his root. Emmanuel, on the other hand, meets a beautiful lady called Adama, who is studying in a university. Then a drunken mob stops their boss, and Chris learns that the people are celebrating the death of Sam. Sam is murdered, and his administration deposed in yet another hostile political takeover. Another coup has taken over the government. And there is mix of celebration and chahos on the street. And as Chris tries to piece together event, Adama is abducted by a soldier. And the soldier wanted to rape Adama. And Chris wanted to save Adama. 
and the soldier ended up shooting Chris. He killed Chris. So Emmanuel, Adama, and a crew of other sympathizers from the previous regime make their way back to Bassa to give Beatrice the tragic news of her husband to be his death, the death of Chris. So the novel ends with a grieving Beatrice as she holds the naming ceremony for Ikem's and Elewa's child. Elewa had given birth after the tumultuous kidnapping and murder of her partner Ikem. And it is customarily, customary, it is only men that used to give naming ceremony. But Beatrice has come to give to do the naming ceremony. And then the child is given the name Amechina, which is ironically a masculine name. That means may the part never close. And this can symbol symbolically mean that eh, it's a new beginning for the people of eh, Kanga. And then it is a sign of relief for the people of Abazon who have been denied water and other social amenities by the regime of Sam. So, in our subsequent video, we are going to be discussing the characters in the novel and then the major themes in the novel as well. So, have a great day and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you.